Greg Ehrenberg from Odd Chopper here to break down week seven of the NFL season while you come in, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment below to let me know whatever it is you think about my bets for this week. Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Any comments at all? It's all appreciated. I am looking to bounce back from what was a horrific week six of the NFL season for me. Absolutely got my ass kicked. Since then, it has gotten a little bit better. Won all of my bets on Thursday night football, but last week, no good. We don't like NFL week six. The bets I had for the main slate just got crushed. I had Devin Singletary under 43 and a half rushing yards. Zach Moss got ruled out for that game with Devin Singletary being the only running back in the backfield. Once that happened, I knew I was screwed on that bet. It wasn't going to go well. I had Rashad White over rushing yards, thinking that the Buccaneers were going to blow out the Steelers. Not only did that not happen, the Steelers actually beat the Buccaneers outright. Singletary didn't really, or uh, Rashad White didn't really end up playing much. I had Cooper Cup over. 89 and a half receiving yards. I love that line with Horn out for the Panthers. And what ends up happening? We had Cooper Cup right around 80 receiving yards heading into the fourth quarter. And then just didn't have to play in the fourth quarter because that game ended up being a blowout. And then finally, I had Travis Kelsey under 78 and a half receiving yards and he just played really well. So my bets sucked last week. Not gonna hide from it. Just telling it like it is. Win, lose, draw. I come here, I tell you guys the results and I try to be transparent with you. Here's how bad it went. This is a true story, this happened. So my bets last week, I get a text message from my wife's boyfriend who told me that my bets were so terrible that he tailed them and he cannot afford to take my wife away on vacation for the holidays. I don't want to hear that. This is impacting the lives of the people around me. So I have to be better for the sake of my wife, my wife's boyfriend, and my future children who we've agreed to not DNA test to find out who the real father is. I have to win bets. So we're going to be better, I promise. Week seven, these are the best bets. We're gonna do better than last week. For my first bet of week seven, I've got PJ Walker over 156 and a half passing yards. PJ Walker sucks, the Panthers suck, but I mean, this is such a crazy low number for a game script that almost has to be pass heavy for the Carolina Panthers for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're the biggest underdogs of the week. They are double digit dogs playing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they just traded Christian McCaffrey, which means that they're probably even more apt to pass the ball than they already were without their number one running back. So I'm not trying to advocate for P.J. Walker in any way, right? That's not the point here. The point is that he is still a professional quarterback. He does this for a living. He plays football, throws the football, and I just don't know that any quarterback in a pass-friendly game script should have a 156.5 passing yard prop. So I'm looking at P.J. Walker over 156 and a half passing yards. Right now, we've got him projected for 190.3. Once again, a really, really low projection, but it's still over the 156 mark. So I'm going to take the over to start the slate. The next bet I have here, it is under 249 and a half passing yards for Jared Goff. And he's in a really difficult matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. So we have Goff projected for 222.1 passing yards for this weekend. And this Cowboys team has really stayed afloat despite the absence of Dak Prescott, just because of how good the defense has been, in particular, the pass defense. So DVOA numbers this year, the Cowboys defense overall sixth in defensive DVOA and third in pass defense DVOA. So I, I thought this team was in a lot of trouble when Dak Prescott first got hurt and Cooper Rush took over. We've got Prescott expected to play this weekend and make his return, but the defense is elite. It's as good as it gets. And Cooper Rush also played better than expected. So credit to him for that point. So Jared Goff, I think he's a really tough matchup. The Lions have once again struggled this year. So I'm going to lean towards the under with Jared Goff. And then one thing to point out also, this line is 220, uh, 249 and a half at BetMGM, but FanDuel, DraftKings, they each have it at 247 and a half. So just make sure you're getting the best line possible. If you haven't signed up at BetMGM, we have a link below in the description box. You click on that. And if you head on over to BetMGM, it's actually going to give you $200 basically for free. All you have to do is place a $10 bet on any NHL money line. And as long as there's a goal scored in that game, it pays out $200. So the game's not going to finish 0-0. It's an easy free $200. And you can take that, you can bet on Jared Goff, and you get a couple extra yards of value compared to a book like FanDuel or DraftKings. The next line I'm looking at, it's just a really low number. A.J. Dillon's receiving yard prop is 9.5. I like the over on this mark. If you look at what A.J. Dillon did last week against the Jets, he had 11 receiving yards, so slightly went towards the over on this number. But here's a big thing. He was targeted six times in the passing game. And obviously crazy inefficient. Six targets finished with 11 yards. But if you tell me that A.J. Dillon is live to get six targets in a game, he's going over nine and a half receiving yards almost every single time in that scenario. And overall for the year, 
he has had 11 or more receiving yards in three out of six games. He's also been targeted multiple times in all but one game. So I think A.J. Dillon's workload is way, way getting overlooked in this spot. I just don't think that this guy should ever have a receiving yard prop as low as nine and a half. Uh, we've got A.J. Dillon projected a little over 20 receiving yards. The, the over expected to hit 70% of the time. So I think this number should move as we get closer to the game. I don't really quite understand it, but over nine and a half receiving yards for AJ Dillon, he probably only needs one, maybe two catches to hit the over here. Targeted six times last week. I like the over. The next bet I'm looking at is over 80 and a half rushing yards for Josh Jacobs, who's quietly been one of the best runners of the football in the NFL this year. And his workload way on the rise last week, 21 carries against the Chiefs. The game before that, 28 carries against the Denver Broncos. This is a massive workload that Jacobs is, is shouldering, and he's averaging 5.4 yards per carry. He has had five-plus yards per carry in all but one game this season. Just crazy high workload for Jacobs, and he's in a terrific spot this weekend. He is going up against the Houston Texans, which is good for a couple of reasons. First of all, Houston's defense, no good. They are overall 26th in defensive DVOA and 29th in rush defense DVOA. So Jacobs, massive workload. He's been efficient going up against one of the worst rush defenses in the league. And the game script couldn't be better. The Raiders are at home. They are seven point favorites. Everything here lines up for Josh Jacobs to carry the ball a bunch, to be efficient with those carries and a plus matchup. This is a really good number. I like the over for Josh Jacobs, over 80 and a half rushing yards. For my final bet of week seven, I'm looking to buy low on Jonathan Taylor. We just recently got word that he is going to be returning from his ankle injury to play this weekend against the Tennessee Titans. It's a really important game for the Colts. Big rivalry game. The Colts have struggled to open up the year. And I know that Taylor has just been terrible, especially from a fantasy perspective relative to where he was last year. But his receiving prop is 10 and a half in this game. Give me the over on that mark because Jonathan Taylor is still somebody I consider to be very talented four games that he's played this year he's gone over 10 and a half receiving yards in two out of those four games but also keep in mind he got hurt in one of those games so the three games that he's played to completion he has hit the over in two out of three of those games and we also have to consider the numbers that jonathan taylor put up last year where he only failed to hit double digit receiving yards in a few games by and large part, this was a guy who is hitting the over on this prop in way more games than not. He failed in a couple of spots that were massive blowouts, uh, a win over the Texans, 31-0. There was a double-digit win over the, over the Patriots. But for the most part, he hit the over in all but five of his games last year. So I think we should feel pretty good about the over on what Jonathan Taylor's workload typically should be. If this was a year ago and we were seeing an over-under receiving our prop of 10.5 for Jonathan Taylor... It would have really been eye-opening. It would have been something that I don't really think we would have uh, even thought would have been possible. But with him struggling a little bit this year and the Colts offense looking bad early in the season, that's something that's happened. But I also think we should consider this. Matt Ryan's played better in the last couple of weeks, and he was terrible the first few weeks that Jonathan Taylor was active. So maybe him just getting acclimated to playing on a new team. Michael Pittman is also healthy now. So that's something else that benefits the offense. But uh, Jonathan Taylor, last year averaged nine receiving nine yards per reception. So I'm looking at it this way. Jonathan Taylor, if he gets just one catch against the Titans, somewhat likely to hit the over here. And I think he's probably going to get targeted and catch more than one pass in this game. So final bet, Jonathan Taylor over 10 and a half receiving yards. So recapping the bets for week seven, I got five of them. We're going to bounce back from last week. And we've already started better this week. Monday night football, one Thursday night football. We swept the card on that and went three and out. But let's get this main slate together as well. PJ Walker over 156 and a half passing yards. Jared Goff under 249 and a half passing yards. A.J. Dillon over nine and a half receiving yards. Josh Jacobs over 80 and a half rushing yards. And then finally, Jonathan Taylor over 10 and a half receiving yards. Those are my bets. What do you guys think of them? Do you have any pushback? Anything you really like? Anything you don't like? Or other bets that you like for the slate? Let me know below in the comment section. Also, like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Have a great week.